so I am really interested in trying to find ways to connect up the Western thought that I'm already familiar with, with ideas that are outside of that tradition. Um, now I have been saying, um, I think that Adorno opens a lot of doors that kind of that make it possible. Um, even, even just inside, of, there's the idea of, I mean, it's the notion of the priority of the object. So taking theoretical thought, specifically dialectics, and approaching different objects, different conceptual objects in a new way, not trying to subsume them within systems that you've already created is open-ended enough, I think, to approach. I mean, he, he believes in taking seriously um, historical particularity. So I, I believe that that would also have to be true for regional particularity and cultural particularity. Uh, so he doesn't do that, but he opens a door. His, his, his ideas can connect. But I'm wondering if uh, just anyone, uh, any thoughts about ways that from the West there'd be a way to get more of an understanding of ideas um, from Brazil or from Algeria. How can people in the West, if we want to, um, understand well, more? Understanding that we cannot understand perfectly, but what could we do? Do you, do you have any thoughts? Anyone? Mm. I'm, I'm thinking about um, my my presentation tried to to show this kind of how to take an object to a historical object to think more about this and the, uh, how this object constituted a subject uh, relation between uh, how for example slavery uh, is a basic is a basic uh, relation in the colonized uh, or southern uh, countries and uh, maybe southern critical theory too it's inescapable uh, to think uh, here critical theory without uh, this experience this tragic experience of uh, slavery and uh, uh, when i see now uh, for example uh, the attempts to connect critical theory with the colonial theories. I think that's a good point to, to think. Uh, when I see, for example, M. Allen uh, to work uh, critics of a new generation of critical theory, uh, what I am saying uh, in general words, normative critic, uh, I, I think uh, the possibilities that M. Allen, for example, opens to think more about the critical theory and the limits of enlightenment, not as a question to abandon the enlightenment project, because there is some some aspects that we very relevant to think about, but uh, to think beyond the enlightenment to uh, to open more territorialized uh, uh, perspectives to, like uh, Dalau said, uh, as Dalau said, uh, soil is not uh, the prop the the nation the con the limited nation, but it makes impossible if you don't think about territory in a larger aspects. Uh, uh, and I think that is a point that the colonial theory are, are uh, uh, trying to show to critical theory to rethink. And in this aspect too, I think that is not uh, a, a coincidence uh, when this, the colonial theories are trying to reconstruct the first generation of critical theory too because Adorno and I can say Benjamin and Marcus too, in the same way, or maybe others, are trying to take the object to understand the, the contradictions, the social contradictions by this object. And, uh, but I think that uh, just to end uh, my, my thoughts, my, my, or my connections here, 
uh, I think that uh, in the southern theories, it's very complicated because it's not a, a very well determined object. Object violence, for example, is an object, a constitutive <laughs> object in, in our in our relations, and it's not a determined object. That's a kind of uh, place. Uh, there is a kind of uh, structure uh, that makes a relation between the I, the other and, and the self, for example, uh, in a very uh, disturbed way. Then how to think this disturbed way? That's that I think that's the, the challenge for us. How, how to how to think uh, in a decolonial way? Because sometimes when we see uh, the perspective, the normative critic about this, he said, "No, violence is not so good. Violence, is, we we have to reconstruct a public space." But the public space created in in colonial territories is the violence space. Is the like of Benjamin, in some words, say that the cultural the 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 documents of the civilization is the document of the barbarian, the barbarism. And uh, that's that's a very important aspect that we have to think, I think, uh, in when we think this relation between critical theory and Southern theory. There is another subject, there is another narratives, there is another uh, object that appears that is not so clear uh, when we think from the perspective of the Enlightenment, but it's very interesting because it's the same objects, narr narratives, um, but questions to the Enlightenment too, uh, the limits of the Enlightenment and so on and so forth. That's that's a very important aspect that we are trying to, to create uh, uh, when we mix the colonial and the uh, and the uh, critical okay. theory to right, uh, can I say something? Right, um, thinking of the answering your questions, um, Jeremiah, um, the word or the notion of locality came to my mind immediately because critical theory was born in a Eurocentric uh, space. So for, for European people and subjects. Uh, but now there is another project um, that I'm really interested in reading about and why not uh, theorizing in, that is the post-human uh, project. At the same time, there is this notion of locality. If we refer to critical theory as a Eurocentric theory, um, that he, that you, through which you can understand only European subjects or Western subjects, but you cannot understand through that critical theory or the Frankfurt School or Adorno's theories or Foucault's, they are not all the time relevant when it comes to uh, an Arab subject or an Arab culture or a Muslim society. So, but at the same time, in the 21st century, uh, with all this global, uh, environment that we can find on social media, I think we are becoming more rather post-human than um, uh, post-colonial subjects. It's it's not the subaltern that is that you can see in our young people, those who are social media beings. Uh, so you cannot figure out whether those you find on Facebook with fake um, accounts, whether they are Arabs or Muslims or Europeans. So we are rather, we must revise and rethink critical theory um, in terms of its contemporarity. So is it still relevant in the 21st century with this global uh, type of connection we have with Western uh, countries and or with Western people? I think uh, that's an interesting point we could just extend in uh, further discussions. Uh, can I? 
So I'm, I'm thinking. It, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, so if uh, I'm, I'm thinking of what Silvio uh, said and, and now what Dalal just mentioned about this, this post human condition. I don't know if it's a condition, right? Because uh, it's a post human. So I think um, if you think of the human condition now, the post-human condition, maybe it's not a condition, but this 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 situation in which we we have this mm. this question being posed, I think it it speaks of what uh, you asked Jeremiah when you when you asked how how can someone can, coming from the Western Canyon under, understand this the sudden theory. And it's also a question that I make myself, because I think we have a reality in the South, which is a reality of contradiction in, in, in what we understand as knowledge. It's a contradiction in the sense that when we are trained and, and, and do our research and, 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 uh, and our tra training in, in universities, we, we do not learn this as a subject. I, I mean, in general terms, right? You can, you can then... Uh, try to study it sometimes even you know getting yourself into some kind of trouble <laughs> in, in in academic terms when when you when you go for this because this there there is much um there's much uh resistance in and now not in a sense of you know, uh, good resistance but i mean uh, people resist to to use this as a valid uh, knowledge and valid theory uh and in this sense i think um what uh, what uh, uh, Dalal says of the post-human is uh, speaking to the disconnect of our people with its reality, which now has come to uh, uh, a level with the, the new technologies that are uh, you know, playing such an important role, uh, that we have more difficulty of understanding our reality from a term from terms that come from a conversation uh, done in by a culture that has been marginalized because one thing is to say that oh there is a marginalization of this culture because we do not have writers in, in the southern hemisphere they do not produce theory but then when we go through the 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 process of doing so, we don't produce a sudden theory. And this is colonization being uh, once again playing its role. So when, of course, there is an experience, there is an experience, and what, what I, I, I don't know how to say this in, in English, maybe Sue does, uh, what I think it's an interesting discussion of lugar de fala, uh, so uh, from where do I speak, right? So we have an experience and we speak from a reality which is distinct from people in the northern uh, hemisphere but that does not mean that we are uh in 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 some engagement with the knowledge of the people that um that are uh, outside academia and of course this to which extent to the extent of what we consider rationality because of course we have our daily lives and so we go to the market, we know a lot of people, you go to your family and, and there you have a relation with, uh, with uh, knowledge and, and, and the subjectivity and the objectivity of your reality. For instance, when you, when you have to you know, be aware of where you walk in Brazil, in, in, in the streets, and, or, or when you confront, of course I'm saying this from a middle class condition. I mean, if I were to live in, in the periphery of Brazil, I would say, see this in a very different way. Uh, most likely so uh, so when you when you see that of course it, it is a vivid experience but when you talk of it when you discuss it you discuss it in terms that do not engage this this conversation and i think this is the contradiction of of, of trying to produce some theory it's not just because the the references are are not accepted in the canon in in, in the bibliography but there is a limit it's an objective limit here. It's not just because people wish or want. To. Of course, I'm not just justifying what, what, what is done because of that. But there is a limit of, of, of extension of possibility 
when you do not engage this rationally and when you do not put it into terms that can could be understood and and of course this is also a limit to what Silvio says when when there is a very ambiguous form of rationality in the modes of thinking proper to Brazilian people and to Latin America because of course it, it, it does not fall into the logical categories it does not use the logical categories that we were trained to use in academia yeah, thank you I I do want to say um, something about um, what you're saying about the references not being accepted in the bibliography I know you're saying specifically that's not that there's a lot more than that, that there's a certain limit that just has to do with basic understanding or experience. Um, I just wanted to mention that I think that um, there is a real problem um, with... Uh, so the structure of academia, at least in the United States, I'm assuming in Europe as well, um, uh, it's very, very... Uh, it's very important for uh, people to try to publish within the top journals in the field. And there are gatekeepers in the sense of people that are um, reviewing uh, the articles that are sent and editors that are vetting which ones are even reviewed at all. And uh, part of their criteria is going to be, does this engage with the conversations that are already happening in the top journals in these fields, so they're they they're very uh, they're very conservative. They don't want new voices, and that's not. I say that, and I, I there are a lot of people that would say that's absolutely not true. Well, we do want new voices, but the voices have to assimilate in order to be accepted. They have to yeah, they have to already engage conversations in the terms that they're already happening, so they have to be transformed. Um, and, and bringing in authors that are, have not already been um, stamped with approval by the particular field um, in the West, uh, a lot of times, I mean, you can get, you'll get a reviewer telling you that they're not an authority or that you need to be citing this person or you have to, there's, so the, there, and, um, and the job market's pretty bad, so people are very concerned about that. You have to, <laughs> you, you have to make sure you're publishing the right way in the right journals and talking about the right things. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that there are pretty strong systemic forces in academia that are, uh, people are saying, um, you know, we need to bring in more, more voices from the South. We need to do this. We need to get out of, but a lot of times the conversation just stops there. Um, people say it needs to happen, but uh nobody knows how to do it um, just wanted to mention that mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe because is I, I was thinking about a kind of uh, uh Marcus in terms of a one dimensional society that is a situation that puts Integ integrated op in oppositions. There are oppositions, there are new voices, like you said, Jeremiah, but it's an integrated uh, voice, not a noise. That's that's a point. And uh, I think, for example, the destiny of uh, uh, f uh, black students and, uh, and uh, that is not assimilating inside the philosophy, for example, in America, in the United States, but there is a cultural studies department that is uh, put uh, aside of the center of the discussion. The philosophy is the academic philosophy is that or that, but not. And there is a space for this kind of discussions in the cultural studies that's very uh, a very uh, strategic uh, colonial way to think uh, to assimilate new discussions but uh, integrate this kind of new voices but beside of the the center of the the discussion for example maybe it's changed because cultural studies are very strong uh, voice inside of the academics 
sometimes. And, uh, but it's interesting to see how academics create some certain strategies to uh, accept uh, the, the discussions, but uh, uh, in a restricted way. And uh, such a strategy, we can think about how to, to make a rupture against this kind of uh, uh, strategy, colonial or, or one-dimensional, like I, I like to say, uh, strategy uh, to absorb your positions, but uh, inside of the, the, the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that yeah, the one dimensional the one dimensional analogy makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, so th there is a question about so how how to get um, voices from outside the Western canon, um, uh, a, a very legitimate central place within those discussions, so that there is not this strict separation uh, without either kind of essentially colonizing those ways of thought um by by integrating them in a way which dilutes them or takes them out of their context um but then at the same time not considering them to be all complete noise or completely other in a way that can't be understood um and that both of those are mm -hmm. positions that are problematic and so i don't know um i think it's important to try to find a third way and i don't know what that is um i actually don't feel like I'm qualified to know what that is. <laughs> uh, I think to, to a large extent that's not something that somebody from um, America should decide. Uh, mm. But I just want to, to put out that it's kind of a conundrum. I'm not sure what uh, what the answer is, but there has to be something. Mm -hmm. One one thing that I, I was thinking now is uh, for example, affirmative cultures uh, or affirmative policies in Brazil, for example, uh, is changing a lot of perspectives. For example, black people there is making theses in Brazil, in medicine, for example, uh, or in uh, ah, the word is uh, physician. They are discovering the kinds of disease uh, sickness that the black people suffering like diabetes or something that uh, that is not uh, really studied in the in the academia for example then there is new aspects that is appear or indigenous people that makes anthropological studies and uh -huh. that appears new kinds of uh, cultures and uh, for example the, the last one is uh, Amazon, Amazonian rainforest is not a, a nature places, but is cultivated by indigenous peoples too. There is a lot of plants that the 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 indigenous peoples put here and there, and they create this kind of biodiversity in Amazon. Then there is a kind of human culture in the Amazon structures. This kind of studies that's new for us in America, in Brazil, for example, uh, it's very important. And that's why sometimes, uh, like uh, like uh, Bruno said, uh, there is a kind of a struggle uh, for the conservative forces here against academia because it, academia is an open space until now. To, to reflect more about new cultures and new voices. The noise, but the noise is a very uh, interesting noise uh, that makes us to think about it. Uh, I, I just, uh, just, just a comment on, on what you just said. Yes, I think uh, it is, it is a, a, re a reality in the recent years what has been done in, in terms of public policy which has made possible for these subjects to enter the university, produce and, and, and change some paradigm uh, around what is, is knowledge and what, what the, how, knowledge, how, how knowledge ought to be made. Uh, but that's uh, 
I, I mean, it's important to remember that in, 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 in academia itself, it, there are also these forces of conservation. Mm -hmm. And uh, much yes. of what has, made, has been made possible was made possible through public policy and funding in ways that now in the recent years, unfortunately, with the, the political uh, situation in which we are living, in a, a very conservative uh, government, <clears throat> we have not questioned and uh, not, not only questioned but attacked. I mean, if 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 the poor, so to say, if the poor, so to say, uh, entered the university, now the the intention is deliberately to uh, get them get them out uh, and. Uh, so I think this also reflects on what we consider theory and philosophy. Okay? Like, like you said, that the, uh, the idea of putting these subjects as uh, cultural studies, as this exotic way of thinking, uh, instead of engaging it in what the university produces and what the academia actually thinks and, and is most relevant. So we are, we are also facing these contradictions inside of academia. I think it's worth pointing out. <coughs> I think, unfortunately, uh, it's the same thing that is happening in Algeria. I, you know, you probably have an idea of uh, the public movement that is taking place uh, since uh, I said the 22nd of February 2019. This is what we call Herak in, uh, in Arabic. So instead of going back to uh, social, sociologists and um, uh, trying to understand the, uh, the composition of those people who are all Fridays and every Friday get into the street to, to to voice their agonies and to voice what they want from the regime, they are trying to uh, diffuse on television sociologists who just give um, that fake image of the Herak or the, the uh, people's movement. That is, it's just a few people or uh, uh, just a limited number of people who are uh, going to the streets just to ask for the uh, fall of the regime. But it's not the case. I mean, it's, um, it's a, a really complex uh, structure of that movement. I mean, there are teachers, university teachers, there are uh, doctors, there are lawyers, there are judges. They all have something in common that they know what's going on in the political regime. So instead mm -hmm. of listening to uh, the uh, the uh, the analysis or just getting the analysis of the sociologists, they just refuse to um, let people produce in this topic. I mean, there are few researchers who are doing uh, now currently researches on the uh, people's movement or on Hirak. I mean, yeah. it's really unfortunate. As a person, I tried to participate with uh, something on um, what makes the uh, the young people of university, the, the students, the students go to the street, uh, that is, uh, protest every Tuesday, while ordinary people protest every Friday. So students are really aware. And if you want to understand the philosophy of these students who are 21st century learners and 21st century beings, you need to go, come back to the sociologists and to critical theory to understand how you're going as a, a political regime, how you're going to deal with this people's movement. And it's not coming to an end. I mean, it's still going on and we still have the, the elections on uh, December 9, 2019, but people are refusing these elections because they are aware of what is happening in the country. Uh, so in academia here again, we have uh, certain limits and red lines not to cross. Yes. And there, uh, Dalla, there is a specific uh, journal to discuss. The, uh, for example, the cultural studies journal in, in your in your academia system, academic system or not it's no no there aren't cultural studies mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. either find uh, 
types of journals who are psychology journals or English studies journal or education journals. Instead, anthropological journals and cultural studies journals are really uh, are not there. I mean, you you can't you barely find one. I mean, mm. to my opinion, uh, there isn't no. Mm, Even yeah. the uh, the discipline, it's really unfortunate to tell you that the discipline of cultural studies, you can't find it, you cannot find it in any university in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just ask our Anglophone or EFL students, we we teach them culture and civilization and, 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 but we don't teach them cultural studies. They don't know nothing about, for instance, Adorno or the Frankfurt School. Mm. So we are really uh, far away from um, the uh, the essence of critical theory and its significance role in understanding the uh, the structure and the nomenclature of the uh, of the society. Mm -hmm. In spite of the translation, there is tra there is translation of these authors in in Arabic words. Of uh, authors, you mean? Uh, the uh, yeah, the for example, the cultural studies authors are translated to. Yeah, no, you find you find translations. You, you find, find translations. Uh -huh. You find translations, but rather in French, and those who mm. read in French are not the majority. Uh, yeah. The majority read in yeah. Arabic, mm. so you you probably must be surprised if I tell you that the majority of uh, students in mm. most disciplines know very few, if not yes. nothing, about Malik bin Nabi or uh, people like Katib Yassin, he is an author as well, Algerian authors, of the 20th century. Mm. Uh, we have other um, sociologists and writers who are in exile, rather. So they are yeah. in exile. They write from diaspora, but they are not given a space and room in academia here in Algeria. So we just uh, uh, watch them through YouTube or through television and uh, Western channels or European channels, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. And let's make uh, important to uh, maybe a uh, uh, we feel we see the project in Frankfurt School of the review the site shift that is a very interesting project because there is a lot of papers and says uh, from people that are exi exiled but not only uh, people that uh, are in in dangerous places for example that can create this a place to to put ideas to change ideas and uh, that's the first generation project is very interesting because it's not a national uh, or a territorialized or localized particular, but it's an international project of exchange and maybe it's something that we need to to think about uh, how to uh, broke this these walls that uh, colonization and dictatorships regimes. Uh, puts to our lives. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like somebody needs to translate a lot of these writings into Arabic too. This is yeah, very, yeah, very yeah. basic. Yeah. Uh, very rare translations of Foucault, of uh, Bourdieu, of Derrida, of uh, Adorno, of Dussel, on another hand. So mm -hmm. It's really unfortunate, though we are mm. trying to introduce these uh, scholars and their philosophies in our uh, English departments, but very few lecturers do that. And uh, uh, also, uh, Dalal, uh, if if I could ask, um, on 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 the recent events in uh, Algeria, this this uprising, these protests. Uh, w would you indicate uh, some uh, scholars that are are looking at from a critical perspective, uh, not you know just replicating what the media says? Yeah, that 
I'll give you a name. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, uh, Kamal Dawood, who is a, a writer. So uh, he was a journalist and he produced a lot of, he wrote about the political system in Algeria. And, and then he, after the, the uprisings of February 2019, um, he started writing other types of articles from France and from other parts of Europe. So his vision is quite um, critical and at the same time, um, uh, you know, he's a Francophile a bit. So we cannot really trust his writings mm. because he speaks from a very dangerous space that is the, the Francophile uh, space, the in favor of a group in the, in the regime, those who are pro-France. I don't know, but there are others who are uh, lecturers in uh, University of Algiers. Uh, I can cite two or three, but they produce and they uh, speak in Arabic, so they produce articles in Arabic. The audience, the international audience, uh, cannot read their works, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and their works are not translated. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, people who write in, uh, in French, uh, they do have their position, their own position. I mean, it's quite politi political and quite complex. I mean, there are uh, the Arabophone, there are, there are the Francophone, and there are the Francophile, those who love mm -hmm. that France interferes in our country, you know? So, mm -hmm. intellectuals in Algeria are categorized according to their ideologies. It's always the ideology that stands behind their opinions and their uh, scientific productions and articles, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. The the Ximus' the project that is a pool of uh, very, very universities, Cairo, Lebanon, Mexico, and Brazil. And uh, one part of this project is to translate the 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 scholars between us, the, the some uh, important scholars like Paulo Freire, for example, that is not translated for Arabic words. We can no. translate it to do it, and it's very. Uh, that's a point that we feel like an important action that we have to do when we have this kind of connection between so different and so close at the same That's, time uh, uh, scholars uh, experience mm. and i would like to appreciate your some of your uh, dalo uh, suggestions to translate and, and it will be very important to us to know uh, uh, more uh, about uh, I have already started doing works, that, yeah. but yes, uh, I'm doing that with uh, the open culture study, but it's a Polish uh, renowned journal. So I do translate in Arabic uh, articles mm -hmm. for them, but I do oh, not great. do that back home, you see. Mm 